This is Occupy Her Cabin coming to you live from in front of the Polk County Courthouse. We are uh, waiting for uh, Ed Fallon, a former member of the Iowa House of Representatives and a uh, candidate for governor. And uh, he is to be arraigned today on a trespass charge when he refused to leave Governor Branstad's office when he was trying to get him to uh, say his stance on the proposed Bakken oil pipeline. And he did not get the response that he wanted. And so he decided that he would occupy the office. There were two others with him, but they did not risk arrest as uh, Ed did. And uh, so he should be coming out here pretty soon. We are waiting for him. So as you can see there, Other reporters here. One of them did a mic check. So I decided to go ahead and go live. Waiting for him to come out and uh, hopefully I got enough juice, but if it gets too long, I might go down for at least a few minutes before coming back up. Oh. Young kids don't like it at all. They get the way, though, if you want to do a low shot, just push it to the third level. Yeah. Yeah, that's where... Uh, you. Yep. <laughs> now we just have to wait for the start of the show. him coming up to the courthouse. And now the big cameras will be remounted. His attorney is Joseph Blaisbrook, who has done a lot of the legal work for fellow activists, including occupiers. So one of the reporters is uh, wiring him up. Oh, is, is that his attorney there? Yeah, that's yeah, Joseph Blaisbrook. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was. <coughs> Yeah, he did a, a oh, lot I of those. Uh, yeah, Joe yeah. Fagan and most of the, oh, yeah, the uh, activists. Yep. Yeah, yep. Represented. He and along with Sally Frank did a lot of the league work for us occupiers. Yeah, right, right. Well, my, uh, Sally Frank represented my son. Yeah. He did post tests against Walmart and, and yeah. uh, sweatshops out of the yeah. law. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone. Last time I was here was about, well, almost four, about four years ago, and that was with uh, the uh, protest at the state capitol regarding concerns about Wall Street, and it made a lot of sense to me to um, plead not guilty. That was Occupy Wall Street. And I was very fortunate to have the incredible legal counsel of uh, Joseph Blazer, who I actually had not met prior to that experience. And uh, the uh, process worked well from our point of view, and the jury found me uh, not guilty. Well, this is a very different situation. That was a public space. There was a big group of us gathered to express concerns about what was happening with income inequality in this country. And it made a lot of sense to insist that we have the right to be there. 
as uh, I've talked, with, talked about this with, uh, with Joseph and with other people, um, this is a different situation. This is a private office. It's posted that it closes at 5 o'clock. And so we are going to um, plead guilty to the charge of trespass in this case. I want to say two things, though, and then uh, invite uh, Mr. Glazebrook to share his perspective. I just got a call this morning. This is totally unscripted, unexpected. I got a call from a farmer in the path of the pipeline. <coughs> He's a big farmer. And uh, he has so far resisted all efforts to have the pipeline company come and uh, survey his land. <coughs> and there's a bunch of people who fit that description. This is not the one I wrote about last week. Different farmers. And he, um, he thought it was remarkable that, you know, the pipeline company officials seem to think they have the right to come in and trespass, basically. Um, uh, oftentimes, farmers discover them there without having any idea they're coming. Uh, if they don't get their way, they come back again. And, uh, and yet, here I am, you know, getting arrested for trespassing in the governor's office. He, he found that to be uh, a little disturbing, that, you know, we, they have, farmers have no protection against this company coming in, whatever they want. Today. Now he's been able to stop them. There's a handful of landowners who have had uh, the intestinal fortitude and have been able to bring in the appropriate legal connections, attorneys in some case, county sheriff in another case, that they've been able to stop that from happening. But uh, that's one of the big concerns that people have expressed throughout this process, is the, that level of arrogance that the company has, uh, has, um, has exercised. Um, <clears throat> the other concern I have is, yeah, I'm going to plead guilty but of a charge to me, in, in a cause, I just say, guilty in a cause that is very much righteous. Uh, this company, what they want to do to Iowa and to these landowners is totally wrong. They have no right to do this. Uh, and again, I, I mean that legally. I think legally, if we see a challenge under Iowa law, the case could be made that there is no, no justification for a private oil company, a private pipeline company, being able to use the public's power of eminent domain. So we'll see where that goes, but I think uh, if there's any guilt to be talked about in a bigger sense here, it's the guilt that this company should feel and that others who are supporting it should feel for uh, you know, taking land, threatening to take land against people's will, um, using tactics that are very aggressive and very disingenuous in order to get the signed easements that they want. Uh, and in the end, um, you know, I, I really think we're going to prevail on this, but I think with the action that I took the other day, and again, I want to thank all the people who helped advise me on that, who shared that space with me to help give me support, because I don't, again, I don't like doing that. Um, one of my least favorite things to do, probably my least favorite thing to do of anything is to spend a night in jail. Uh, it is absolutely no fun, and I don't recommend it to anybody who's not been there yet. Uh, and I, I don't take that very lightly. I take it very seriously, and I don't intend to uh, do that in any, unless it really feels like the right thing to do, the only thing to do. Anyway, uh, soon we'll be going inside uh, room 201. Um, Joseph, uh, Joseph Blazeberg, my attorney, has uh, again agreed to uh, to uh, stand with me in this cause, and if he has uh, maybe a few comments, if people have questions. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that I I agree with my client's analysis. It would be very difficult to defend from a legal standpoint what my client did, and so we do plan to plead guilty in just a few moments. However, just as surely as my client committed trespass in the governor's office, so too is the oil company committing not just trespass, but what is essentially a legalized sort of theft um, to the people of Iowa. And it is outrageous. So if you compare my client's culpability to the culpability of the oil company and those in government who are working with the oil company, I think that, it, that we'll, we'll see who is acting more appropriately. Um, so if I, at this point, if there are any questions, I think we'd be happy to. What's the potential for a guilty plea? For uh, trespass, the, the maximum uh, is 30 days in jail. Uh, realistically speaking, however, given my client's light criminal, lack of criminal record, frankly, uh, we don't anticipate further jail. Thank you, question. You said that's a private office. It's not a private office. It's a public office. It belongs to the governor, yes, but he's an elected official, so it's really the people's office. So Ed was there speaking for the people that he, he represents. I'm one of them, one of the landowners that's affected by all, by all of this. My understanding of the case, and correct me, Ed, if this is wrong, you went there to talk to the governor, and they wouldn't let you talk to the governor. 
you were there representing the, the 12 to 1500 landowners who were affected and, and lots of groups, including environmental groups and, and, and people in towns and everywhere for the benefit of the state of Iowa. And the governor refused to talk to you. Well, he was he was busy, um, but we did. He was there. I but saw, he didn't I saw schedule him. you at another no. time. He didn't no, actually, schedule you at another I actually time. did follow up that uh, visit with a request for a meeting, and I haven't. Heard, I even filled out the paperwork, but I have not heard back. Okay. About that. Yeah. So they could have given you a time to come back at a later time, and you would, your request would have been met. Okay. And I would be happy I think, to accommodate. I think that's the point that you should make in your case when you talk to these people: is that the governor has a duty to accommodate us the people that elected him and the people that can't unelect him for failure to meet with groups like us who have a, a special interest in, in dealing with things like this pipeline. Okay. Yeah. Senate File 206 and House Bill 29 do what? Senate File 506. Uh, they would do several things. They would create a 75% threshold. Uh, that would be the percentage of land that would need to agree to a voluntary easement. My problem with that is, uh, again, it's a, you know, it's in some places, like in Nebraska, 90% have already agreed, but there's still 10% who have been able to stop it. My problem is um, a lot of the people who signed those easements didn't want to. They felt they had no choice. So I have trouble with that. Uh, it does uh, create a higher level of, insur of, uh, of, of insurance, I guess you'd call it. Uh, uh, it raises them from 250000 bucks for the whole state, which is a laugh, to 500000 per county. It also requires the pipeline company to pay something for... Um, uh, legal fees for those landowners who might not be able to do that. Um, it also requires the Economic Development Authority to assess the need of the of the um, <coughs> energy that would be produced by this. And there's another feature too. They have to vote on it in their plan. Oh yeah, they have to vote on it in their plan. Um, Included in, in their plan, their annual plan. Yeah. Uh, there's there's another feature, but I'm not I'm blanking on it. Anything else? Is the full text of that of those bills online for anybody to read? Yes, you can go to uh, the, uh, the legislative webpage. Uh, Senate, just look up just Google Senate File 506. Not Google. Type in the search uh, criteria Senate File 506 and HSB 249, and they're pretty much companion bills. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep the judge waiting. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ed, for your work. Thank you, Thank you. Joseph. Good luck. I'm going to go in and uh, shut my stream down because I'm going to go into the courtroom. Yeah, Kaylin. David, remember uh, me, Senior Rand? Uh, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, sorry. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm going to shut my stream down for one thing. My phone is uh, getting low on juice, so uh, I'll be uh, back at another time. <laughs>